Before the invention of microchips and electric motors, children's toys were powered by cranks, gears, cams, and followers. These mechanical toys, or automata, continue to elate and fascinate creators and operators of all ages. An automaton is a simple machine designed to follow a sequence of operations, resulting in predetermined movements. Showcase pieces can move up and down, appear and disappear, or move apart from each other. This may sound really complicated, but a simple automaton can be made with just a few supplies and a lot of imagination. We're going to make an automaton with one crankshaft that when turned moves a connected wire up and down. This can be combined with two stationary points on either side. This creates the perfect base for a winged or flying creature. The showcase can be made to look like anything that flies. A bird, a butterfly, a dragon, a bat, insects. Be creative when choosing a subject. All we need are three clothespins, to create the base, a paper clip for the crankshaft, and copper wire for the stable attachments. I also have paper and air dry clay to create the showcase piece. Begin by gluing the clothespins together, stacked so that the pinchers of the middle clothespin are facing the opposite direction. The base can be left exposed, but I'm going to show you two different ways to cover it. One is with paper. Choose a decorative paper. This comes from a one pound scrap pack that has tons of options to choose from. Using quick dry tacky glue, just going to coat the paper. And the reason we're coating the paper and not the clothespins is because all of these sort of get in the way and create a lot of gaps. And this will ensure a good solid coverage. I'm going to press it down using my fingers to get into all of those gaps. And while I'm here, I'm going to use a extra piece of copper wire to poke through the center hole carefully. Don't poke your finger on the back side. Like so. And fold down. Trim the edges on the side. Going to use the same wire to poke through the other side and widen the opening. So now I essentially have a neatly wrapped box. I'm going to set that aside to let the glue dry. I'm going to pull over another base piece and I'd like to show you an easy way to cover the base with washi tape. The washi tape itself is actually quite thin and can be a bit see-through. So to get good coverage, I'm going to cover it in masking tape first. First, wrap around the top and the sides. Then simply wrap around from top to bottom. Remember to leave the center hole exposed. Now, wrapping the base in all of that masking tape means that I won't waste any of my pretty washi tape. I'll have more left on the roll to make more automatons. Now that we have a base made, we're going to make the main turning rod or the axle. To do this, we're going to first open up a large size paper clip. You can use needle nose pliers for this. Generally, paper clips are soft enough that they can be easily bent by hand. Now, to make the crankshaft, we're going to first make a 90 degree bend about an inch from the tip of the wire. Then, Using the width of the pliers, about a quarter of an inch or so, I'm going to make another bend, keeping the whole wire parallel and in line. Before I make another bend, I'm going to slide two beads on, 
And these beads are going to help stabilize our main wire here. And you'll see that in just a moment. I'm going to make two more bends. And if you have extra at the end, you can snip it off or fold it over. Just making sure all the little kinks and folds from the paper clip are gone. And that is relatively straight. Use the pliers, the very tip, to create a tiny little bend. Attach the two together in the center between the beads. Hold it in place and turn the wire. Now this copper wire is about five, maybe six inches long even. It can be trimmed at the end, but it's always better to have more material than too little. Now I'm going to thread my turning rod through the center of my base. Make sure that it's possible to turn it. Bend the end of the wire so that it does not slide out. I'm actually going to add a little bead right here at the base. It's mostly decorative, but it can also help keep the axle in place. And then for extra security, I'm going to bend this end as well. Now this will be the part of the toy that is held and turned. The copper wire will move up and down, but first we need to create a cage to keep it upright. To do this, simply cut a paper clip, half an inch to three quarters of an inch, you can always adjust by sliding it back or forth against the top of the base. Right here seems pretty good for this one. So I'm going to tape it. Now that the upright wire is caged, it will move up and down when the axle is turned. Setting the base aside for a moment. Now it's time to create the main showcase piece. I'm going to show you how to make one using paper first. Begin by folding the piece of paper over. This way, you'll have a pattern on both sides of the finished piece. Now you can trace your template and then cut it out. I'm going to hold my template against the paper and cut, as sometimes it's a little bit hard to see the tracing on decorative papers. Going to apply glue. Find the lowest point for the copper wire. Position it so it's all the way down and bend your wire at a 90 degree angle. And you may need to trim. Sandwich the wire in between the two pieces of paper and press. The bend in the wire will ensure that it does not slide out when in use. So now my automaton looks something like this. You can also use model magic to create your base shape. Made a little bird here. And for this, you would simply stick the end of the wire through the clay. You can always add a drop of glue for extra security. Now I'm going to create the wings. I've selected two different decorative papers for my wings. One will be the top side and one will be the bottom. To create your wings, simply place the pieces together and then fold. Put your template on top and cut through all four pieces of paper. I now have two sides for my wings and I'm going to glue these together. Fold a tab at the end of each wing and apply a drop of glue. Again, I am using tacky glue for this step because it does have such a strong bond. And attach your wings to your creature. Make sure the wings are even on both sides and as centered as possible against the base. Now it's time to add wing stabilizers. To create the stabilizers, you will need two pieces of copper wire. You want these to be slightly longer than the distance of the main center wire to the top of the base. Bend the wires at a 90 degree angle. It's helpful to have your tape ready beforehand. Place the wire 
in the center, centered along the base. Fold any extra material down and tape. The wire should be upright. And repeat for the opposite side. Try to keep the wires as equally spaced from the center cage as much as possible. Secure with tape. Alternatively, you could use paper and a glue stick in the same way that I'm using tape here. Now, we're going to attach the stabilizers to the wings. This can be done in a few ways. You could tape the underside where the wire meets the wing at the furthest point here. Another way to attach them is to create a hole at the tip of the wing using a push pin and thread the wire through the wing. <laughs> to secure it, simply bend it around. You could also add an additional piece of tape or a piece of paper to cover the wire. Test the crankshaft and the motion of your toy. This one could be a little bit tighter. I'm simply going to bend the wire to take some of that slack. Secure your adjustments. Some adjustments may be needed. If the showcase piece is having trouble moving, the wires may need to be trimmed, bent, or shortened in some way. A good rule of thumb is that the wing pieces should be about half an inch shorter than the main centerpiece in the end. Refine and trim where needed. Washi tape can also be used to extend the wires to the wings and add flexibility. The instructions I have shown you build the base for a flying creature, but you can use your imagination to build any animal or object you want. When creating a unique design, start with the showcase object and the desired motion for that object. Then, design a base that can support that movement. Additional materials such as mini wooden clothespins, craft sticks, and binder clips and drawing board clips may be needed for more complex designs. Whatever you design, be sure to look for solutions whenever you get stuck, refine the design, and enjoy the process. The fun is automatic. For hundreds of free lesson plans like this, visit dickblick.com or scan the QR code here.